Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjavi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjavi Hari Kunja biha, edhaya gopi janavallava, girivadha, edhaya, girivadha, gopi janavallava, girivadha, Gary, <laughs> Jamun Tira Havar Chahiram Jamun Tira Havar Chahiram Head Hire Hadha Hadha Kunja biham head higher heart, heart of Kunja Head high, who be down a wall Gary, got it down here. Yeah, who be down a wall Gary, got it down. Head high, who be down a wall Gary, got it down here. Who be down a wall Gary. Yeah, <laughs> He reasons ill who say that Vaishnavas die 
And when thou art living still and sound, Vaishnavas die to live and in living spread the holy name around. So on the uh, Samadhi Mandir of Srila Haridas Thakur, this inscription was placed there under the guise of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur to give us a clear understanding that a Vaishnav doesn't die. A Vaishnav lives eternally and when they're here in the material world serving the Lord, they are living and when they leave their body, they go someplace to do the same thing. <laughs> Death is not for the Vaishnavas. <laughs> Death is for the materialists who think that there's body and live for the enjoyment or for the propagation of the body. But the devotee doesn't live for the body. We live for the eternal principle of serving the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So that is not under the influence of the material energy. So therefore, devotee never you know, dies. They simply go from one place to another. And ultimately, they go back home, back to Godhead. So... Uh, when we want to speak a little bit about the glories of a particular devotee who has departed, we have to understand this principle that death is not for the devotee, it's for those who live for the body. The body needs to be taken care of as you take care of a machine that you need to do your work with. But that's all. <laughs> it's a good machine. And it requires care. It's a complex machine, requires care. But it's not that the body can give us happiness. The body is, cannot bring happiness. The body is a, is a miserable entity thing that causes us so many problems. <laughs> There's no happiness attached to the body. But we have a body, and Prabhupada said that to have a body is a bad bargain. <laughs> You go to the store, and you go shopping, you buy the wrong thing, and on the package it says, we don't accept returns. You're stuck with it. <laughs> so that's the body. You got it, you're stuck with it. Now you have to use it in the best way. So he said, use the body in the best way, and that is to engage it in the service of the Supreme Personality of God. And then the body will be a way to reach the platform of eternality. It, it's like there's an old saying where if you step on a thorn, this is very common in India, if you step on a thorn and it's stuck in your feet, you look for another thorn somewhere on the ground and you take that thorn and you pull out that other thorn with that thorn and then you throw both thorns away. So the thorn is stuck, goes into your problem, you use another thorn to get rid of the problem, and then you get rid of both. So it's like that. We have the body to bring us back to the eternal world, and then when we are fully free from body conceptional life, we have no need for the body anymore. It's a good vehicle to get us there, but it's all it is is a vehicle. So those who give up the body in Krishna consciousness, they live forever, eternally in the Supreme Lord's spiritual realm. So one such person who just recently departed was a very dear devotee, where thousands and thousands and thousands, maybe tens and thousands of devotees had contact with him on a personal level, having come to see Dhammayapur and had his association heard his classes and saw the results of the wonderful service that he had done both for the devotees and for the supreme lord this person was pankajangri prabhu who was even acknowledged by Srila prabhupada there's a discussion with tamal krishna goswami who was talking to Srila prabhupada and he said these two boys who are now in uh, Mayapur, Janani Vasan, they are right out of the Chaitanya Chari Tamrita. <laughs> and Prabhupada said, yes. He said, they are, they are ideal. <laughs> and then the discussion goes on, and Prabhupada says a few more things, that Krishna has sent these th the devotees to do this wonderful service. So they, Prabhupada acknowledged that they were special. 
they had come to do this work to uh, develop Sridham Mayapur. And really, when you look at it, the history of Mayapur sends around these two, boy, two, two brothers who came from London. Janati Vas came in 1972, and then later on followed by Yupanka Jangri in 1973. Both took initiation from Srila Prabhupada in Mayapur and had dedicated their entire life in serving Sri Sri Radha Madhava, Astasaki, along with Panchatattva. And uh, especially for Pankajangri, he was the main pujari for Lord Nishringadev. In uh, 1984, the devotees got attacked by some gundas who were quite heavily armed also. And they were really, and they came into the temple and they were causing so much problems they um, they wanted to do, uh, take away Radharani. They wanted to take away Srila Prabhupada's deities and other. So the devotees fought back. There was the go devotees had some guns and they a couple of dacoits were killed and one devotee lost his leg in the fight. And that devotee is a sannyasi in our movement, Bhakti Raghava Pan Bhakti Raghava Swami. Uh, so, and that was a, they were actually looking for Srila Prabhupada, they wanted to do harm to Prabhupada, but fortunately Prabhupada wasn't there. And many devotees went to jail because of that. So that was a big issue, and then some devotees decided that we need Lord Nishringadev here. And so they commissioned one very senior devotee who was a South Indian Brahmin, very advanced, Atmatatma Prabhu. And he, you know, he knew South India good, came from South India and knew many of the temples. So he went on a mission to try to get, and they wanted not only a deity of Nordic Shringa Day, they wanted the fiercest of all deities, who comes right out of the pillar. So... Lord Nishringadev has nine manifestations of forms that are called Ugra. So his Ugra form comes in nine different levels of ferocity, ferocity, up to the level where he's just bursting out of the pillar and all he sees is Harani Kashipu. That's the most fiercest one, and that's the one they wanted. Atmatapa Babu went. <laughs> And everybody said, no, <laughs> we're not going to make this deity. This deity is not, it's not we're not going to make it. Finally, the original person that he went to, he went back to him and the man said, yes, actually, my spiritual master, who was a Sankaracharya from South India, the Sankaracharya from South India, he said, you should make it. But then again, it took a long time. And he had to find the right rock to make the deity because... The rock has to be a living rock, not just any old rock. It has to be a shila, which is living, and it has to have a bug line across its body where a bug eats, this, eats the granite going across the body. When you find that mark by the bug, and you hit the deity in nine places and it makes a sound, that rock can be used to carve not any old rock. And so... So that took a long time to find. The Sankarachaya finally found it, and finally he made the deity. And that deity was taken back. And then Pankajangri immediately agreed, even before the deity came, that he would be the pujari to take care of that deity. And so that is the, you know, the Ugar Nishringa deity that is there now in Mayapur. A very powerful, powerful deity. Really powerful. Just when you take darshan of that deity, you can feel his presence is so strong. And he is very instantly merciful. He gives many benedictions to his devotee. And Pankajanki Prabhu has compiled a small little book where he describes the incidences that devotees have communicated to him of how they've had interactions with this deity how he has come in their life and saved many people from illness. So many things. Lord Nishringadev was there to help the devotees. And ever, 
since Pankajungi was there, he would accept requests around the world from de devotees to do special pujas for devotees who were sick or devotees who needed help. And then he would arrange for these pujas for Lord Nishringa Devas. And uh, I remember I was there, we did one for Jai Pataka Maharaj when he was very sick. It was really an elaborate sacrifice with months much mantra chanting, which lasted for hours. So he was always forefront of arranging for Lord Nishringadev to uh, perform, the, to uh, offer sacrifices to. He dedicated his life to serving Lord Nishringadev, but he wasn't simply relegated to Lord Nishringadev. He would travel also. He came here, we also know, and we all, he came to London, he came to many other temples in Europe also to preach Krishna consciousness and to uh, also to bring Lord Nityananda's lotus feet in different places in order to... Uh, well, that was Janandivas who did that. But Pankajangri would also come and preach Krishna consciousness in different places around the world. So he was a preacher. I had the good fortune to live next to him when I was in Mayapur, I was on the, there's one building very clear near to the temple called the Senior Brahmachari Ashram, where Brahmacharis who are very senior and either in age or in practice of Krishna consciousness had special privilege to live in that particular building. So I had my room, I have a special room there that, that I always get every time I go there, and it's right next to Pankajangri's. <laughs> So when uh, we would, I would see him quite often. He would be coming in and out, doing his service to Radha Madhava or to Lord Nishringadev. But many times, when I would pass by his window, I would see him. He would sit there reading Bhagavatam. He spent many, many much, much time. I think whenever he was in his room, he was always reading Bhagavatam or chanting, either one. He loved Bhagavatam. He preached Bhagavatam. And he glorified Bhagavatam, and he, you know, he would. He was a regular uh, class giver of Bhagavatam in the regular weekly schedule. So he was very absorbed in Srimad Bhagavatam. Aside from all the, the services he had, I had the, the good fortune to be, and we would talk many times. Very light-hearted talk. And then sometimes he would speak to me about, you know, things that are going on in Mayapur. And uh, I remember in the morning program in Mayapur, they would have two parts to the morning program, just like we do everywhere. Mm. At the end of Tulsi Puja, then the devotees break up for a job, and then the second half begins. And the second half begins with an artsy to Lord Nishringadev. And everyone gathers in front of Nishringadev's altar. And then after we greet Nishringadev and sing the Nishringadev prayers, we go to Radha, we go to Panchatattva's section and greet Panchatattva with that song that you sing here. <laughs> Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Doya Gaudamo De Toma Bina Kedaya Luhu Jagat Samsa. So beautiful, and there'd be hundreds and hundreds of devotees in front of Panchatattva singing that. And then we, after that, we would go back to Radha Madhava's section and wait for the deities to appear, and then the curtains would open and everyone would pay, pay their obeisances. And then Kirtan would start. And during that, then Srila Prabhupada would get on his Vyasa son, the small deity, and uh, Janati Vas would take the deity off the altar and put it onto the palaquin, and then they would take the deity in front of Radha Madhava, and then Prabhupada would get uh, Charinamrita, and then they would go to uh, Nishringadev's altar, and there would be Pankajangri standing right at the front of the altar with the Padapitas of uh, Lord Nishringadev, his lotus feet. 
And so then Prabhupada would come up and they would give him Charinamrita and then he would move on and then Prabhupada would circumambulate the whole temple and then there would be kirtan going on for about 15 minutes. So right after Prabhupada would get the mercy from Lord Nishringadeva, all the sannyasis that were there, we would line up and go up and get, you know, the parapitas on our heads also. This happened every day. But I knew one thing, and of course, I don't know, I don't think anybody else did it, but I was kind of sneaky. <laughs> I knew on the top of the pot of pitas, Lord Nisringadev kept some special tulsi leaves that were right on his lotus feet. So when I would go up, sometimes I would be the first one, depending, sometimes not, I would always go to Janani Vas. I mean, Pankajanga, I would go like this. And he knew what I, would, what I meant. Then he would take the Tulsi leaves off the Parapita and he would give them to me. And sometimes there would be a bunch of Tulsi leaves and as soon as I get it, everybody would run up to me, practically knocking me over, you know. <laughs> Trying to get some of those Tulsi leaves. Coming right from the lotus feet of Lord Nishringadev. Jai Ho! Happy Father's Day. <laughs> so Yakanya had a baby today. So congratulations. What's her name? Abaduti? Abadutini, <laughs> okay. <laughs> congratulations. Now you can get you can get presents on Father's Day also. <laughs> So, yeah, he would always give me those Tulsi leaves. Sometimes he would look at me like, okay, <laughs> he'd give them to me. Like, <laughs> and then I would always be happy like that. So he, he, was special, he would be very merciful giving out the Tulsi leaves. Um, and we spent much time together. I guess the, the time where we had the most experiences when we would be in Kirtan, we would be in the temple in the evening, and we would be, Kirtan would be going in, and I would be there with the Bengalis dancing, and we'd have Kirtan, and they loved to dance, and the Kirtan would be going on. And then when the Kirtan would start building, 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 it happened all the time. Jananivas and Pankajrangri, sometimes both of them, sometimes one of them, would just jump into the Kirtan. <laughs> It would always come when the kirtan was roaring and they would jump in. And then that would make the kirtan even more ecstatic. <laughs> and they would do their famous dance. If you ever seen them dance, you'll, you'll think, what kind of dance is this? This must be some, what they do in the spiritual world. <laughs> they have their own very graceful and very sweet expressions of hands and arms movement that you cannot copy at all. It's not possible to copy it. <laughs> so uh, so unique and so very wonderful to watch. Uh, I have a video <clears throat> which I didn't bring tonight of that. I was supposed to bring it, right? But I didn't bring it. It's on my phone, actually. You can get it off my phone and put it up there. We can show it. But I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Huh? We are, it was in India. We were they were doing in the Shringa dance. <clears throat> Let's see if we have time at the end. We it's only a, I think it's about a four minute. It's four minutes the video, something like that. <clears throat> but they would love to dance, and then we would all be dancing together. They they were just so very very very. Uh, um, enthusiastic and despite all the services they had because they had to manage the whole deity department and of course they put some other devotees in charge of doing other things but then you had Radha Madhava with the eight Sakis and then you had Panchatattva two times you had small deities plus the large deities there were ten deities on that altar and then you had little Radha Madhava plus you had uh, Lord Chaitanya. So on the main altar, you had, you had 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 deities on the main altar, 
Panchatattva altar, they had 10, that's 24 deities. And then Lord Nisringadev, they had Prahlad Nisringadev, that's 26. And you had Srila Prabhupada's deity, so 27 deities, or maybe even a few more that I missed. You know, that's, that's the responsibility they had to manage to make sure all the deities got everything. And so they, but they were there. You could see them. They would be there for the Guru Puja. They would be there for the Shringa Artis. Many times they'd be there for the Mangal Artis. And they were giving class. Both of them would give class. So they were very, very enthusiastic and very personal. You could approach them and speak to him and devotees would feel very... And they, they, they gave so much blessings, benedictions, associations. And Pankajankri was very enthusiastic to preach. He just was always looking for opportunities to spread Krishna consciousness. So that was one of the... his main qualities that besides all the responsibilities he had <clears throat> <clears throat> Many times we would gather at, um, what is it called, that Jagannath temple just down the road. I think it's called Raipur. Raipur? Yeah. Rajpur. Yeah, and then Pankajangi would sit sometimes for like a couple hours speaking the pastimes of Jagannath. Because those deities were gotten by Jai Pataka Maharaj in 1979 and brought into ISKCON. They had been neglected by where they were being served before. And the time that the uh, Pujari could no longer take care of them, so he, he gave them to us. And those deities, there are so many stories of how devotees had interaction with those deities. They're just very, very personal. So Pankaj Jangri would hear all the stories, and then later on he would sit down and tell us for like an hour or two hours just telling of all the, all the experiences that the devotees had with these deities. If you haven't seen these deities, you walk there, you're in the presence of Lord Jagannath. He's just so powerful. It's like, whoa. <laughs> So yeah, so they were also helping to manage that temple in setting up devotees there to keep the worship of Jagannath going, which is now going really nicely and elaborately with wonderful offerings and wonderful, wonderful pujas and dressings. So uh, they really, between the two of them, they really made Mayapur what it is today in terms of very powerful force of spiritual uh, practice. Uh, of course, we're going to miss, miss Pankajangri because it seems like something is lost now. That something is important is no longer there. But Lord Nishringadev, he had his reasons and for whatever reason, and he arranged nicely that Pankajangri could come back to Mayapur and depart in the Holy Dham. He was in in the hospital in in Calcutta, but uh, somehow it was arranged. And when he came back, it was just right, practically the next day, or not a little bit after. Then he started to depart, <clears throat> and he departed at a time of the day which is the most auspicious time. I was talking to Nishringatirta, who's there, and he was telling me that the devotees were saying, this time is the most auspicious time for departing. It was 12, 12 15 in the afternoon, just past noon, when he departed the world. And, and Jananivas, although losing his very dear brother, and, and good brother and god brother, he was in a very happy mood, and he also said, I know he went back to Godhead. <laughs> so uh, so he, we can see the exemplary life of him and of Pankajangri in so many ways. Um, it's just like when you think of Mayapur, you think of these two brothers. It's just, they're inseparable. 
And they gave their life to make that, that uh, entire temple what it is today, which is really a flourishing temple. Their dedication, their purity, their service, everything. And uh, both of them were personal friends of mine. I would spend time talking to them and just, of course, whenever they had time, but they usually always had time to, to spend with the devotees. Uh, this is a little bit about the life of Pankajangri. I don't know a lot of details because my only experience with them was generally when they were in Mayapur. And uh, there are many, many, many wonderful stories. I know Pankajangri was offered sannyas, I think in, I can't remember what year. And you know, when you're a sannyasi, you have to carry a danda. <laughs> He said, I'm, I'm, already, I'm carrying a bell, and I'm carrying gee wicks, and a incense, so I'm, that's all I can carry. <laughs> so in other words, he went in, he, his, his desire was to keep doing his puja, service to the Lord like that. But he was more than a sannyasi, in the sense that he was also preaching and showing the perfect example of Krishna consciousness like that. Both of them stayed brahmachari their whole lives. So this is really... And I know for sure, and these are side stories which I don't usually talk about, there were many ladies attracted to them and wanted to make them into grihastas. <laughs> and, uh, but they weren't interested. <laughs> I had to intervene and tell one of the ladies to get lost. <laughs> Because they were, they were becoming too much, you know. But there is, you know, when when you are a celibate, you're attractive. <laughs> Ladies are attracted to celibacy because most guys are interested in enjoying women. But when women see men who are not interested in the, in enjoying women, they are attracted to that. That's a natural attraction for women. But they were not only celibate, but they were great devotees, very kind, very qualified in everything they did, very personal. There was one time in my Krishna consciousness that I would go and spend, and I would eat lunch with them every day, and then we would have the, the Nishringa Maha, <laughs> Lord Nishringa Dave's Maha Prashadam coming right off the altar. We get the whole plate. <laughs> Huge, <laughs> and it was like whoa, you know. So I think my Krishna consciousness really shot up during that time. <laughs> of course, we could only eat so much, but it was in something I think I, I did for about two weeks, <laughs> and uh, I think I invited myself to come, <laughs> but they didn't mind. <laughs> so, so that was wonderful. Yeah, we would spend time just... But, uh, yeah, so it's a great loss for the entire society, not only for Mayapur, because they were known and loved throughout the world as ideal devotees who had sacrificed everything to bring Krishna consciousness to Mayapur. And Prabhupada, although Prabhupada only knew them for about a year or two, Prabhupada already could see that these two boys were very special. He indicated that in his discussion with Tamal Krishna Goswami. <laughs> so these are some of the things that I can remember. Most of our exchanges were philosophical. We would talk about philosophy. Or sometimes that we would be giving classes together or we would be dancing together. That's basically our association. <laughs> like that. So And Pankajangri, although afflicted with disease, he never felt Depressed, he always remained light-hearted. Even when he was in the hospital, 
if he could, when he could communicate it, he was always Krishna conscious and not burdened down by any bodily elements like that. Very transcendental. Any questions? Comments? Mm-hmm. Any thing that anyone would like to add? Mm-hmm. A question coming from the internet. If you have it, you can re- recite it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, this is a question from Avaduta Raidas. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. I heard in one lecture that Srila Prabhupada said, Don't doubt that we will meet again in the spiritual world. Does this only refer to his disciples or also to his grand disciples? He said we will have our ISKCON in the spiritual world. So that means everybody. <laughs> Prabhupada will be there and you'll come and he'll, he'll greet you and then he'll, the cowherd boys and the gopis will show you where to go. <laughs> well, Prabhupada said we will have an ISKCON in the spiritual world. That's an exact quote. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This this once you connect with the spiritual family, it's eternal. It's not something, um, you know, like you meet people in this world, you see them, and then it's gone. You know. Tamal Krishna Goswami said, "I want to be one of the first to leave, so I can be there and greet the devotees as they come back." <laughs> He said that, yeah. He was serious. And he did leave quite early. So, yeah. Death is for the non-devotees. For the, as it says in the Srimad Bhagavatam, with, with the rising and the setting of a sun, Another day is lost and one is closer to death, except for those who engaged in hearing the pastimes of the all-good personality of Godhead. So one who engages in hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, they live forever. (laughs) We live forever anyway. (laughs) You can't die. Even if you want to die, you can't. (laughs) You, you are eternal. You have to live someplace. Where? That's up to your desires and activities. You, you are telling the Lord where you want to be and what you want to do. And so the Lord puts you in a place. But if you want to engage in hearing and chanting His glories and serving the Lord, then wherever you are, you'll do that. And that's the spiritual world. And when you become perfect, then you actually enter th- into the actual spiritual world. So he, that's the formula. Here and chant the glories of the Lord, serve the, the, serve the Lord and serve the devotees that are serving the Lord. Okay, any other questions? Anywhere? Comments? Oh, I can't believe tonight somebody has to say something about Japunkajangri. If you're all going to sit there quiet after, you know, we have to say something about them. Because you, some of you know him, some of you met him, some of you had interchanges with him, some of you heard about him. Can't all be quiet. It's not fair to everybody. You have to speak. <laughs> Even if you said hello to him, tell us about it. <laughs> uh, 
Ananta, tell us about your experience. Hare Krishna. Hare Bo. His grace, Pankajang Rabuki. Jai. Thank you, Maharaj, for sharing your experience and uh, thoughts. <coughs> Uh, as we know, Ma, uh, Bang, His Grace Pankajangi Prabhu was also visiting Slovenia a few times, three, four times, maybe even more. Here? Yeah. He was attending um, our Yatra program in the hills. Oh, nice. Uh, and um, also Padiatra, I think. A little window, no? Padiatra also. And uh, <clears throat> yes, we remember him for. Co- um, mm, he was very, very, how to say, personal. You can approach him if he was not, you know, he didn't get the feeling, you know, some very, you know, yeah. with the, first with the position, you know, Prabhupada disciple, and, you know, cannot approach. He was really so, so um, approachable. Mm. And, and simple-minded, like a child. He was really, you immediately could connect with him and, uh, you know, uh, he was a very warm person to associate and be with. Uh, so it's... Um, he was uh, naturally friendly. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> and uh, encouraging. He was always... You know, the always come approach with some problem or something. He was, he was so naturally, you know, fatherly-like, you know, it was... Mm, yeah. Uh, um, it was not in like awe and reverence, but was like he yeah, came down, you know, and to encourage and uh, you know. Yeah, that's a Vaishnava. Vaishnava doesn't put themselves on any special platform. They just interact with the devotees accordingly. That's all. And uh, uh, my personal experience was also that um, um, when I went to Mayapur, and then he. Among, among, you know, he met, he meets, he was meeting, I mean, so many devotees, you know, thousands and thousands. And uh, it was really, how to say, really mm, heart touching when, when he remember you. I mean, my, myself, you know, or oh, Ananta, you know, you know, come from some, you know, small village in Slovenia. <laughs> and, you know, he was, he was recognizing and, you know, and uh, immediately share something from the, you know, how it was in Slovenia and that. So it was really um, very nice. personal. Yeah. yeah, very personal. I also yeah. was um, I had one opportunity to to take prasadam with Panka Jangri and Jani Vas in their in their uh, quarters behind oh. the Panchatatva. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a special little yeah, place. Very, yeah, it's very, very special. Did you get uh, Did you get in the Shringa Maha? Uh, I think yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, and I also also had opportunity to associate when I was studying um, uh, uh, Mayapur Academy. Mm. I was there for six months oh. about deity worship, and he and Johnny Vasubhu they are part of organizing that. They edu- actually training. Start, they they started it along with Nishri Yeah, Kavachi, yeah, 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 exactly. They're the ones that made that, which is a, was a real. I forgot to mention that every year. From October to March, six months, you uh, learn all the intricacies of deity worship and cooking also. Yes. Like that. When you, and at the end of the six months, they have a graduation ceremony, give out certificates. Mm-hmm. We honor each devotee. And some devotees are giving outstanding acknowledgments for their, you know, for their studies and how they did. It's really wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we had his association in that, you know, environment. Uh, he was, you know, showing on the altar like that and that. So it was really like a, <laughs> a experience, experiential learning, you know, from someone who was, you know, so many years, you know, Pujari, you know, of the Radha Madhava, Lord Nishinghari, was really, really, um, very deep impression, makes very yeah. deep impression. and. Uh, Appreciation and uh, and the mercy that, that we have mercy that we have they were, we were able to be in you know their association and get uh, catch the mood their mood mm-hmm. and simplicity and uh, all other 
wonderful uh, qualities of the Vaishnava, you know. That's, that's, uh, yeah, you, when you're in their association, it's like a different world almost. Mm. <laughs> so sweet and simple. Mm. <laughs> this is a few Thank crumbles. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Balit Govinda, speak something. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> My English is not practical, so <laughs> I cannot, uh, uh, how to say, share with you everything I feel anyway. So uh, I remember when we were in uh, a Mayapur Yatra with His Holiness Radhanath Swami, and uh, always uh, especially Pankajangri, came to join uh, to some places. And then uh, uh, we saw how God brothers, Srila Prabhupada disciples, love each other. Mm. So it was, it was so uh, touchy mm. so to see. They will speak, they will embrace, they will, I think, also cry, and they will sing and dance. So nice, so mm. sweet. Yeah, so this is spiritual love between mm. the devotees. Mm. So I can share with you only this. Yeah, that's the spirit this that was so, the Mayapur mood. <laughs> yeah. Lord Chaitanya taught that mood. Very, he was very loving towards his disciples, very loving. Lord Chaitanya, even when, you know, he would even embrace his disciples, too. <laughs> he was very personal. Yeah, it was like that. Someone said to Prabhupada, you know, some people come to the Dham to try to enjoy the Dham. And Prabhupada said, yes, the Dham is for enjoyment. <laughs> the spiritual world. <laughs> um, I got one, Maharaj. You know, when, when Pankajangri Prabhu was, was uh, on Padayatra, this was my... I, I was starting, you know, with, with Bhakti Yoga, and when we were in Velenia, this is one town, um, not far from here. I mean, it's like, and we were, we were. He was having a lecture in 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 this gym. And Lita Govinda Prabhu was arranging that we were, and that's the only lecture I he, I heard from him. And when he was speaking about Lord Chaitanya, he said that he's the most merciful incarnation. He starts. He, he was starting to cry, mm -hmm. and I was like, you know, we were just. I couldn't believe that, <laughs> he, that he he really starts to starts crying. Yeah, he's he, he he's feeling amazing. the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. Uh, Prabhupada did the same thing. <laughs> he was crying when he would speak about Lord Chaitanya. He's very merciful. Yeah, when he had that realization, <laughs> being so intimately connected with Lord Chaitanya in his service. I remember... Like when they installed the big deities of Lord Panchatattva in 2004. And then they had a grand Abhi Sheikh, and you can see it on film. And then they planned every, every um, five years to do this grand Abhi Sheikh for the Gorpurnima festival. So they did again in 2009, 2014. And each time I was watching all three of them, I was there. So then 2019 came, and I said, I'm not going to watch this one. I'm going to bathe. <laughs> I'm going to get on that altar and bathe. And so, um, and they were choosing who would go up there, but they didn't choose me. <laughs> 
but I went up anyway. <laughs> and then, you know, I think it was Jananivas was there and he saw me and I, he said, yeah, come on. <laughs> so I came. And I remember, you know, walking behind the deities. It was, it was impossible to walk because the floor was full of charinamrita. We were sliding all over the place. And you had two brahmacharis trying to hold you so you wouldn't fall. And finally I got to, they gave me a Dvaita Charya. <laughs> so I took my position above the head of Lord, of Lord Dvaita Charya. And then, and then, uh, uh, Lokana Swami, he came next to me, and so we sh we shared bathing, and we were I was picking these pots up, and these pots are huge, and they're filled with chari namrita. You know, I'm just this skinny kid, you know, I <laughs> and I'm trying to pill, pick up these pots, and and I, but I was so happy to be there that even though my body was falling apart, I was I was loving it. <laughs> We were just pouring all this, and I, you know, and they were changing pujaris for, but they kept changing, and I stayed there anyway. <laughs> I didn't get off, but I think it was the mercy of Jananivas who let who let me allowed me to sneak on and get it. So that was yeah. So they were very, both of them were very kind. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Prabhupada said, Mayapur, he said, the sun in Mayapur is not the same sun you see everywhere else. <laughs> I've figured that one out. Because <laughs> every day you watch the sunrise in Mayapur. And Prabhupada said, that's not the same sun that everybody else sees. Uh, so Prabhupada has spiritual vision, so. <laughs> of course, I've never really realized that myself. It looks like the sun to me, the same old sun I see everywhere else. But <laughs> Prabhupada said it's not, it's a different sun. <laughs> so it's, uh... yeah, so Mayapur is like very special. And we just hope that uh, the tradition of devotion, well, it will continue to go on. It's just very, very special place. And it was made special by the devotion of these two devotees. I think Pankajangri was 77 when he departed. He, was, he wasn't young. He didn't look 77 and he didn't act 77. <laughs> He acted quite young, but he was elderly. He was 77 years old. Yeah, but he was still dancing. <laughs> Anybody else have any association there with him? Any? No. So, Madhatri, did you see him when he came here? I didn't uh, spoke a lot with him. I I know and I remember I like uh, because uh, uh, he was alive, always <laughs> action and always smiling and always. <laughs> <laughs> this is this I remember. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's always alive. <laughs> uh, I have that little video on my phone. Is there any way we can put it up there from my phone? I don't know how. It's, it's what is um, I think so. Somebody sent it to me. I have it on my computer too, but it, the computer's not here. Want to give it a try? Um, yeah, it's interesting. Let me see here where I can find it. 
Yeah, it's a YouTube. Let's see it. Oh, this is not it. Let me see if I can find it here. Here it is. Oh, here it is. You can see it. Oh, that one. Mm. Yeah, from the Pune, no? Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's doesn't have the YouTube uh, thing here. So Maharaj, there's, there's one, one more. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, this same Avaduta Rai Prabhu is asking, I mean, he's like just... Um, I cannot remember well, there is a story that Narasim Hadeu came to the bed of Pankajangri Prabhu shaking his bed. So that's a question mark. He got up at night time, he went to the temple in Gamsha to pay his obeisances. Is that, he's asking if that is... There is another story where one brahmachari had that experience. I think it's the brahmachari, yeah. That, yeah, Lord Nishingadev appeared to that brahmachari. And he was sitting on his bed. The, the devotee woke up and there was Lord Nishingadev sitting on his bed. And he said to the, he said to the uh, brahmachari, When you wake me, you shine that light in my eyes. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and the devotee just jumped out of his bed and he wasn't in a gumshi, he was in his copans. He was he ran into the temple and devotees were looking at him like what happened to him, you know. <laughs> yeah, Pankajangri tells that story. <laughs> it wasn't Pankajangri, it was in some brahmachari that was doing seva on the altar. <laughs> He still has a marks on his shoulders. Yeah, Lord Nishringa, they put his he put his hand on his shoulder, and it felt like he felt like he felt like the whole weight of the world came on his shoulder. <laughs> In the words of one very senior devotee, "You don't mess with Lord Nishringa Dave. <laughs> he is very heavy." <laughs> You have to be very, very, very careful around him and be very humble and very, very expert in doing your service. Can't take it from my phone? Well, you have the whole thing. This is just the ending part here. Probably. Yeah, this is, this is just the important part. <laughs> Can you take it from my phone and put it on yours? Can you send me on my WhatsApp? Yeah, uh, let's see. Okay, what's your name again? Um, it starts with the A. A for Andy, okay. Let's see. Okay, I sent it. Get it? Yeah. I did this. I went ching. This forward to. You have on the Wi Fi or mobile? Oh, yeah. Maybe I don't have internet here. Yeah, it's it's uh, three minutes long. Did you get it? No, because you're not in internet. You're not in. Yeah.
It's the it's the last part where they do the nishringa. They do the nishringa dance. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uncle was the one who gave him the garden. Yeah, yeah. And he also danced in the beginning. I was sitting next to the pole on the bottom there. Are you were there? Yeah. <laughs> if you see the whole video, it's like an hour. We were all, all four of us are dancing for, <laughs> for one hour. That was the last part of it. Yeah. It's a, it takes the it's actually an hour and more the whole thing. That's the end. <laughs> you want I think that's all you have for that little bill yeah, 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 clip. The same. I have the whole thing if you want to watch it one hour. <laughs> Okay, Lord Nisringadev is appearing very soon. (laughs) 
So, Sri Pankajangri Prabhu ki jai, Sri Janani Pas Prabhu ki jai, Sri Mayapur Dham ki jai, Sri Panchatattva ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Lubyana Yatra ki jai.